Hello everyone, my name is Vinya. Today I'll be doing a presentation on antiplatelets. Right, let me get started here. All right, so antiplatelets and how they associate with clot formation and resolution, the need to know about plavics. There are um, two main types of uh, blood thinners, antiplatelets, which are usually plavics and aspirin, and anticoagulants, which are warfarin. There's also thrombolytics. Those uh, basically work by dissolving the clot that's active in the body. What is an antiplatelet? A medication that reduces platelet formation by decreasing the response stimuli that would initiate the platelets to stick together and aggregate on vessel walls. So basically, they don't let the clot clump and stick together. The pathophysiology for Plavix and the necessity, the classification is ADP receptor blocker. The words antiplatelet do as they say, as they inhibit the um, platelet clumping by preventing adenosine diphosphate to bind to its platelet. Once the platelets are altered, their state is irreversible and platelets will be affected for the rest of their lifespan. So what are platelets? Platelets are tiny blood cells produced in the bone marrow that can live up to eight to 10 days. Platelets are intended to help the body form clots to stop bleeding when blood vessels become damaged. So why does clot forming become an issue? Blood clots can form when the blood does not flow within the vessels as they should. If blood pools in major structures such as the heart or arterial system, platelets are likely to clump together causing a thrombus. Clots could travel to other parts of the body, eventually causing a blockage called an emboli. Clots can also be formed from stent placements. And um, they could be formed due to build up of fats, cholesterol, and calcium from plaque. Deposits become hardened and it makes it difficult for blood to pass through. So what can cause a, a clot? Patients that are in the hospital don't move um, as much as we do um, outside of being in the hospital, so therefore they're more susceptible due to immobility. Patients who smoke, who have high cholesterol, high blood pressure, um, they're more susceptible to getting these type of clots. That's why usually you'll see uh, uh, heparin or some type of blood thinner given in the hospital always. Main uses for Plavix is the prevention of a cerebrovascular accident, uh, myocardial infarction, peripheral artery disease, acute coronary syndrome, atherosclerosis, and stable chest pain, angina, thromboprophylaxis from a bypass procedure, official heart valve, coronary artery stent placement, and prevention of DVT. Medications may also be given if the patient is unable to tolerate aspirin, which um, Aspirin is usually given for a prophylactic measure to prevent strokes. Therapeutic effects, um, it prolongs bleeding time, reduces angina pain, promotes appropriate blood flow, and it prevents unnecessary clots, and it reduces atherosclerotic events. Medication alerts. So what do you have to look for with this medication? Make sure they, uh, they discontinue it within five to seven days prior to any surgical interventions, whether it's an um, elective or an emergent, typically it would be recommended patients have an armband that denotes that they have this therapy, so that way if they go to the ER unconsciously or somebody brings them in, um, the staff is aware. Caution in the presence of known or active bleeding, if they have a peptic ulcer or um, some you know, oozing or wounds or anything like that, something to look for and talk to the doctor in regards to giving this medication. In regards to pregnancy, pregnancy, it's a category B, no adequate, well-controlled studies to know if there is a risk, but it's, it's not recommended and for pregnant moms or for lactating moms. I did some research on this medication and um, I found an article about how studies are currently being performed as to assessing Plavix effectiveness and if there's a correlation with genetic factors. For the FDA, they put a black box warning due to um, the possibility that this Plavix medication doesn't work if there's a mutation in the C C1, CYP2C19 gene. So basically, if you have a mutation in this, um, it won't work as effective for someone that doesn't have a mutation. So something to consider in regards to genetic testing when you go to the clinic or when you're about to get this medication for your patients. Adverse and severe side effects. Adverse effects are flu-like syndrome, headache, dizziness, pruritus, taste issues, and thrombocytopenia. So they may have a decrease in their platelets. Severe side effects, something to notify the doctor pronto is nosebleeds, bloody or tarry stools, blood in the urine, coughing of blood, vomit that looks like coffee grounds, sudden numbness, weakness, pale skin. 
patient family education. So once again, you want to tell your patients to know these signs and symptoms of active bleeding. Discontinue the medication if they're going to have any invasive procedures, even if there's an insertion of a PICC line or they're going to have some, some type of blood draws, just, just to let the staff know. Uh, once again, possible genetic testing for the genotype. And they may have periodic laboratory workup. Um, they should also find methods to prevent injuries, such as um, using a soft toothbrush, a razor that's electric, extra caution while using sharp objects, reducing and avoiding participating in contact sports or activities that can cause intense violent bumping or jostling. And just keep in mind that elderly have very frail skin, so they're more prone to getting in, you know, bruising, injury, or skin tears. Um, bear with me here. And also avoid discontinuing the, um, the medication abruptly, for it can cause cardiovascular events. Nursing considerations, once again, monitor for active bleeding, monitor peripheral pulses, volume, reduce injuries, monitor vital signs, monitor drug-to-drug -drug interactions, especially the use of, a, of other blood thinners. Labs to consider are CBCs, platelets, cholesterol, hepatic enzymes, serum bilirubin, and non-protein nitrogen. Herbal and drug-to-drug -drug interactions. Herbal medications that may increase the bleeding is garlic, ginkgo, ginger, primrose oil. Drug-to-drug -drug interactions that will actually make this medication less effective is um, the Nexium, Prozac, Tagamet, and Privacec. And um, once again, the herbal, it will, in, it will increase bleeding for the herbal medications. Um, Cerebral vascular accident. So this is a typical reason why a patient would have the Plavex, the Plavex ordered or the anaplytic therapy um, from a cerebral vascular accident, also known as a stroke. Stroke in general occurs when there's a disruption in the blood flow to the brain due to blockage or bleeding. After minutes, the starved brain cells die. Their most common form of stroke is ischemic, which is caused by um, an artery that becomes narrowed, completely blocked, and then um, a clot is formed and thrombus, and, and eventually um, there's an unhealthy artery of the brain. Trans, transient ischemic strokes, which are TIAs, um, they're known as the mini strokes, which are temporary disturbance in, in the cerebral blood flow, which reverses um, before an infarction occurs, but is an impending um, sign that a potential stroke can occur. So definitely something to educate your patients on. Hemorrhagic strokes are not typically common, but they're caused by weakened blood vessel that leaks or aneurysm that bursts. In this type of stroke, blood spills in, around the brain, creating swelling and pressure, eventually damaging cells. And typically um, for Plavix, it's more, more known to be given for ischemic or for TIAs. Okay. So I did some research on strokes as well, and I did see that studies show that stroke is the fifth leading cause of death in the US. It results in one death per four minutes, and um, 800,000 people will have a stroke, so that's basically one per 40, sec 40 seconds, and it's more in females than it is in males. Alrighty, and major risk factors for strokes are family history, hypertension, cigarette smoking, obesity, high blood cholesterol, diabetes, cardiac rhythm, such as um, AFib, increased age, and men are more likely to have it at younger ages than women during, I mean, after menopause. Alrighty, so what are some signs and symptoms? Everyone knows the famous fast. So the face, there is asymmetry um, when smiling, the arm weakness, speech difficulty. Immediately you see these things, call 911. Very important. Time is ticking. Confusion, headaches, numbness to extremities, particularly on one side. And it's been known that women tend to have, um, that don't have these prominent signs. So always alert your staff. I mean, alert your patients and your staff. Uh, we, I actually had a um, situation where I had a staff member had a stroke at, um, at work. Too much stress. That's very scary. Article on strokes. Um, once again, I discussed that earlier. Arthrosclerosis could also be a reason for to be on Plavix. Um, the blood vessels become hardened and narrow, um, silent, slow blocking of the arteries, putting the blood at risk of clotting, caused by increased bad cholesterol. Patients may need a stent place, which allow proper blood flow. And then um, stents put patients at risk of clot formation and stroke, so therefore they'll be on this regimen for some time. So cultural considerations. So make sure that whenever you're going to work with a patient, 
um, self-reflect, you know, do you feel comfortable going into the situation? Um, educate yourself. Do you know about the cultural background? Ask open-ended questions. Use culturally sensitive education approaches and materials. Be familiar with the cultural awareness materials that you have in your facility. Um, make sure, you know, language barriers, that there's an interpreter, whether you use a phone or a person. Utilize pictures, diagrams, or return demonstration. I'm a big fan of return, return demonstration to make sure that they know what they're doing. Um, or even return demonstration when it comes to educating their family members. Attempt to know the patient's values, what is most important to them, and attempt to make the setting private to promote better understanding and avoid distractions. Sometimes you gotta, you know, turn off the mute button or um, turn on the mute button and then you gotta, you know, all eyes on each other so that way there's an understanding, if it's appropriate, of course, for their cultural background. Encourage family to participate in the teaching if appropriate. So I did some um, research articles here on aspirin and Plavix and um, basically it, their effective treatment in preventing vascular diseases if it, it outweighs the risks of the uh, bleeding side effects. And in conclusion, overall, there was a decrease in the cardiac events by 1.0% and an increase um, of bleeding events by 1.23%. And so basically, combined therapy can put patients at risk of major bleeding. Therefore, nurses must educate patients about keeping a close watch on signs and symptoms or to alert their physician. Another uh, peer article that I did read as well was stents um, meant to prevent stroke may boost risk. So there was a, a study done in regards to if um, patients that undergo stents um, without the combined antiplatelet therapy are likely to get strokes um, or not if, you know, if they adhere to the regimen. So the conclusion was 24% of patients suffered a stroke within 30 days compared to individuals who were treated with Plavix or aspirin. Within one year, 36% of patients suffered a stroke. Patients may have to undergo antiplatelet therapy to prevent strokes from occurring after stent placement. So just something to think about when patients are thinking about this type of um, procedure. All right, so once again, here's my pamphlet. Um, I would um, initiate and make sure that they see that an antiplatelet is a drug that alters the clot formation and resolution and inhibits platelets to stick together. Uh, basically, Plavix, it uses the ADP inhibitor, as in um, doesn't allow them to uh, stick together. It's an oral use only, and it's absorbed in the GI tract, and in the onset is two hours. And steady state is three to seven days. The half-life is eight hours. And the uses for Plavix are, once again, your um, heart attacks, your acute coronary syndrome, your strokes, your peripheral artery disease, and the and it's used for thrombi prophylaxis. What I would want them to know is the side effects, bruising, head, joint pain, dizziness, paritis, taste issues. And notify, notify if there are any signs and symptoms of active bleeding, such as oozing from the IV sites, wounds, pitia, um, abnormal menstrual flows, abnormal peripheral pulses. Special considerations would be the food interactions, so just make sure your patients are aware that, you know, the primrose and the gingo and the ginger and the garlic are going to make the bleeding more prominent, more likely to occur, and the drug-to-drug -drug interactions with the Plavix and the Prilosec, Nexin, and Tagmit make the medication less effective, so they could be at risk of having a clot, potentially. Um, dosing, um, just remember to tell your patients to not discontinue the medication abruptly. They must take the medication at the same time each day, um, just so it works more effectively. And the patients may need to undergo laboratory testing to assess for abnormal bleeding. All right, so tried to do this as fast as I could, and I hope that you all learned uh, hopefully something new about antiplatelets. You're going to see them a lot in our nursing clinical setting. and. Um, I, I hope you all have a great day and thank you for listening. Bye-bye.